Belgium went unbeaten in UEFA qualification in Group H, seeing off Greece and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Manchester United's Romelu Lukaku scored 11 and Chelsea's Ed Nazard 6. Indeed, the Premier League are well represented in Belgium's squad, with players from Spurs, West Bromwich Champion, Manchester City, Liverpool and Crystal Palace as well. Roberto Martinez took over from the much derided Mark Wilmot and instigated a switch to a back three, moved largely by Belgium's lack of quality options at fullback. The midfield axis is strong, with Axel Witzel and Marouane Fellaini the heavy options, while Moussa Dembele adds energy and dribbling skills. They keep it tight, while the focus is getting the ball to Belgium's two stars, Azard and Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne will look to drop off and run the game, while Azard can carry the ball and both will look to set up the lone frontman, probably Lukaku. De Bruyne could start deeper, with Therese Mertens offering a different option cutting in from out wide. Belgium can also select genuine wingers like Yannick Carrasco or wingbacks like Thomas Mounier to flank the midfield, something that will likely depend on the opposition or whether Belgium need to chase the game. Belgium are such perennial dark horses that the phrase has been stripped of its meaning. There is real talent in the squad, though whether the first-choice centre-backs can stay fit matters, and some players have expressed discontent with Martinez, De Bruyne among them. If they stay healthy and happy, Belgium will escape the group with ease and could go a long way. England also went unbeaten in their group in UEFA qualification, seeing off Slovakia and Scotland, among others. Gareth Southgate did superbly to steady the ship after Sam Allardyce left, and England only conceded three goals in ten qualifying games, the best record in European qualification. Harry Kane top-scored for the three Lions with five goals, while nine players scored a goal apiece. England under Southgate have used a three-man defence that is much in vogue in the Premier League at the moment. With John Stones comfortable on the ball and right-back Kyle Walker deployed as a centre-back, England have pace and good passing options. The back three are shielded by a defensive midfielder, usually Eric Dyer or Jordan Henderson, and the former can drop into the back three should one of the defenders carry the ball forwards. In attack, Harry Kane plays as a lone front man, and Raheem Sterling will start on the right, sometimes dropping into the midfield line to turn and carry the ball at his feet. Width will come from the wing-backs, but England's outer midfielders will also push up and out, especially if Deli Alli is used further back than he normally plays for Spurs. England can go into this tournament with a confidence founded in good recent performances, although they must be sure not to leave gaps when pressing teams who sit back, as Panama and Tunisia will do. There is a lack of creativity in midfield, so Ruben Loftus-Cheek could play a key role should Southgate entrust him with pulling the strings from deep. England will cruise the group and should reach the last eight. Panama have never played in a World Cup before, despite nearly reaching 2014. The country's president was so delighted, he declared a national holiday immediately afterwards. Panama achieved this as runners-up in Group B of the fourth round of CONCACAF qualifying, behind Costa Rica. They then finished behind Costa Rica again and Mexico in the fifth round to secure automatic qualification. Gabriel Torres scored three, while Luis Tejada and Roman Torres scored twice. Panama, under Hernan Dario Gomez, play a 5-4-1. It will occasionally resemble a 3-4-3 when Panama get enough of the ball to move into a more progressive attacking position, but their general focus will be to keep it tight, stymie the opposition, and look to hit either Blas Perez or Luis Tejada with long balls. The wide men, probably Edgar Barcenas and Alberto Quintero, will then push inside to support. Much will depend on the solidity of the back three, ably marshalled by Roman Torres. He, like much of the defence, have MLS experience, and his occasional forays into midfield can provide Panama with a means of getting up the pitch. Generally, though, they will drop off, defend, and be very hard to play through. Anival Godoy, another MLS-based player, is a usefully solid presence in midfield, while the vastly experienced Gabriel Gomez or Armando Cooper will likely play alongside him. Indeed, experience is something Panama have in abundance. There will likely be six 100-plus capped players in the squad. What Panama don't have much of is quality. They won't make it easy for anyone, but Panama are unlikely to progress. Tunisia secured automatic qualification by beating Mauritania 4-2 on aggregate in the second round of CAF qualifying, then seeing off DR Congo, Libya and Guinea in Group A of the third round, dropping only four points in six games. Yusuf Msakni of Al Duail top scored for the Eagles with three goals. Tunisia will be appearing in their fifth World Cup, the first since 2006. They've never won a World Cup game, though they managed a 0-0 with West Germany in 1974 and have drawn once at each of their four tournaments. 
Tunisia will play a 4-2-3-1 under manager Nabil Maloul, himself a former international who won 74 caps for the side. They are unafraid to play out from the back, with the midfield pivot of Fajani Sassi and Mohamed Amin Ben Amour dropping in, and the wide players also getting back to offer options in the wide or half spaces. A central attacking midfielder, likely Wabi Kasri or Saifeddin Kawi, will move across to support whichever side of the pitch is seeing possession. Up front, Sabah Khalifa or Fakhreddin Ben Yusuf will be expected to work hard, pressing high, supported by wingers and roaming into the channels so that the wide players can cut inside. Ben Yusuf may also be deployed wide right. Dijon left midfielder Naim Slaty is Tunisia's most potent attacking threat, while Kasri delivers a good set piece. Goals and experience are a concern, only Kasri is in double figures for the former, while only captain and goalkeeper Aymen Mathluthi has over 50 caps. Tunisia are tidy and capable, but the defence can be fragile. They will likely struggle to beat the group's big guns.